All right, how is everybody? So, we have ourselves another update. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, first off, we have, well, this is kind of more of like a, this was a, um, you ever heard of a place called Trader Baker's? Kind of like a thrift place or whatever, uh, you know, type of place. And I love going there. So, I decided, you know what? I haven't been in there in a while. So let's just kind of dig through and see what they got. And I found me some stuff. Yeah. A couple of Blu-rays and DVDs right here on the media files. All righty. So uh, let's get through some stuff here. Um, it's not going to be in any particular order. Um, you know, what can I say? It's just either it's either DVD or Blu-ray. So, uh, Excuse me. So first up, um, I kind of came across this movie by accident. Um, had no idea what it was. It sounded like a cheapy comedy movie or something like that. Until I looked at the front cover and stars, well, none other than Alfred the Butler and Superman. Yeah, that should give me an idea. But which Alfred? Well, of course, we're talking about Michael Caine and Christopher Reeve. In Death Trap. Yeah, I've never heard of this movie. And um, I think it's another one of those movies that's kind of hard to find. Lucky if you can find it. Um, like I said, it just looks good. It looks interesting. It sounds interesting. So I'm like, eh, why not give it a shot? So there we go. Uh, so up next, we have another DVD. We have a video game-based horror film. Yeah, um, this was kind of in the early... 2000s, I believe, when this came out. Um, yeah, it sounded interesting. Uh, so here we have the underrated director's cut, uh, starring none other than, well, Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, we have Stay Alive, the underrated director's cut. Now, from what memory uh, serves me, is that the director's cut has the red cover, and the theatrical version has either a blue or a purple tint cover to it. So, there we go. Different cuts of the movie. Uh, so, up next. So, here we have, apparently, this is a remake. I had no idea that this movie was even re remade at all. Um, I was like, oh, it sounds like, uh, looks like it was made for, you know, on the cheap or whatever. Um, until I looked at the back of it. And, well, it stars Scout Taylor Compton. Uh, from the Rob Zombie movies. Uh, so here we have uh, basically a reboot of April Fool's Day. Yeah, never seen it. <laughs> so there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so up next we have, uh, now I remember this was on, uh, what was it? I think this was on uh, USA many years ago. Uh, it was one of those... Um, made for TV movies, but they were like, it was like three hours long where they had split it, you know, you know, you get part one and then part two, you know, on two different nights or whatever. Uh, but it has, you know, great actors in it, you know, pretty good cast, uh, including, uh, Rufus Sewell, who you probably know from Dark City, um, John Reese davies of course, uh, of course, uh, Stellan Skarsgård, uh, you know, Davy Jones himself, uh, so here we have um, a two-disc edition of Helen of Troy. Yeah, I love uh, good old, you know, love mythology. Of course, I remember taking that when I was in, uh, you know, high school. I took a, uh, a class on mythology and uh, you know, just kind of fell in love with it. And, you know, what can I say? It's Helen of Troy. Maybe it'll go, uh, maybe we'll see. It. We'll do a comparison and see how well the uh, this does compared to the Brad Pitt movie. <laughs> so... Alrighty, so then up next we have uh, another horror film. Uh, here we have starring uh, Patrick Wilson and at the time Ellie, uh, Ellen Page. How knows Ellen Page? Uh, we have from director David Slade. We have Hard Candy. Yeah, I used to have this. I sold it. I don't know why. Um, I think I was just clearing stuff out at the time. This was many years ago. But, uh, you know, what can I say? It's a David Slade movie. And, yes, I know he directed the third Twilight movie. In my opinion, certain scenes are probably the best that that series will ever have. 
Uh, about that, though, he directed a really great uh, vampire film called 30 Days of Night. Uh, check that out. So, yeah, but this movie's really good, too. Uh, so, here, up next, I think this one's a little bit getting a little bit tougher to find, too. Uh, one of Steven Soderbergh's earlier movies, uh, starring uh, George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez, we have Out of Sight. Yeah, now this has... A butt ton of feet has has some great features on it, and I don't think that this has been. I don't think that uh, several of these things have been ported over. I think, but remember, I could be I could be wrong. Who knows? But I just read somewhere. I think this one is getting a little bit tougher to find. So that's why we have physical media people like me showing off our stuff. So then up next we have a great cheese fest. I remember when this was aired on TV. I was like, oh god. It's one of them sci-fi movies, yeah. S Y S Fi when um, Sci-Fi Channel changed their name. I don't know why, but anyways, uh, from of course you know legendary producer Roger Corman, we have of course Sharktopus. Yeah, I mean come on, gotta have some cheese in the collection, right? I mean you know loads and loads of cheese. Well, speaking of something that's not really cheese, but is really good movie, uh, this needs to be upgraded to Blu-ray. Uh, what can I say, though? It's the first movie. I hope we get a fourth one. I'm sure we will at some point, because um, it took them long enough between two and three to get that made. But here we have the first film in the series. We have Pitch Black, starring Vin Diesel, of course, as Riddick. Um... You know, I've not actually watched this on Blu-ray yet, uh, but I just cannot wait to sit down and re rewatch this classic sci-fi film. This came out like in early 2000, and this kind of blew people away back then. I mean, it was a low-budget movie. It's like, okay, what is this? Oh, it's actually a really good sci-fi horror film. Yeah, really, really good. And then, of course, you know, they went more bigger budget for the sequel, and... Uh, yeah, that kind of put it on standby for a while. Uh, then see, then up next we have, well, kind of Adam Sandler's comeback. Um, I've not seen this yet. I know Criterion has the 4K and Blu-ray edition of this. Um, but I'm like, well, what can I say? It was only 50 cents. So, <laughs> uh, so here we have Adam Sandler in Uncut Gems. I have not seen this yet. I know it was on Netflix and uh, he got rave reviews for it. Um, and so yeah, can't wait to sit down and watch it. Alrighty, so then up next, we have a multi-pack. Yeah, um, uh, this just sounded terrible, but I'm like, eh, it's got a couple decent movies in it. But what can we say, the front, the title is what kind of got me intrigued. But here we have a multi-four movie set of the Bloodsuckers Collection. Which features The Breed, The Cave, The Forsaken, and Vampires The Churning. Yeah, <laughs> it's a Mill Creek set, so what else do you expect? Um, so then up next, well, speaking of horror films, I've never heard of this movie. I look The front cover kind of somewhat looks like a comedic type of thing. I don't know why. But, uh, but here we have some psychological horror film with a giant bear. <laughs> uh, no, it's not Cocaine Bear. Uh, it's, uh, Body at Brighton Rock. Never heard of it. It's like, eh, it's a dollar. Why not? <laughs> uh, so then up next, we have a Blu-ray, uh, from director Gavin Hood, who did the first Wolverine movie. Uh, we have, uh, Sotzi. I believe how you pronounce, I believe that is how you pronounce that. I don't really know. But, uh, hey, it was only marked for, like, a dollar, so I'm like, eh, why not? Give it a shot, see what it's like. Uh, then up next, we have, uh, I need to watch this. I watched the first one. It was great. One of the best horror films I've seen in a long time, especially when there's no dialogue. Yeah. It's all spoken in, uh, sign language. So here we have the continuation. We have A Quiet Place Part 2. Yeah. Ooh, previously viewed. Right on the top. Yeah, you gotta love that. Uh, what can I say, though? Uh, it's just a movie, so there we go. Uh, let's see, and then up next, well, we have a, a foreign film to add to the collection. Now, I do have the American release of this, and I think I've got another edition, 
But I'm like, like yeah, I need to get other editions of certain movies that I like. But here we have, I believe this is a Chinese edition, I think. Um, one of my favorite martial art movies. Uh, we have House of Flying Daggers. Yeah. Uh, I believe this is actually from... Uh, obviously, yes, I know it's from China, but uh, it's from Zoki, I believe is how you pronounce it. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, what can we say, though? It's a really good movie. Uh, check it out. Uh, let's see. Then up next, last few here. Uh, well, with uh, Jason Statham's latest movie, The Beekeeper, coming out at the time of this recording... Uh, I found this. It sounded interesting. Uh, so here we have a film from him called uh, Redemption. Never seen it. It sounded interesting. So I'm like, eh. Sounds like a typical Jason Statham type of movie. But uh, what caught my eye on it is that it was uh, directed by Stephen Knight. Uh, who did um, a really good movie with Tom Hardy called Locke. And uh, that's a really good uh, independent film. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Redemption. Looks awesome. And then uh, we have an older school movie that was recommended uh, by Martin Scorsese to Leonardo DiCaprio when they were making uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, they were had a video that they were discussing different movies that were kind of, you know, inspirations for certain scenes or whatever. And I think this one actually originally, I think, was for The Aviator, I think, at the time. But here we have a Robert Wise classic film. We have The Setup. Yeah, uh, it's an older boxing type of movie. And uh, what can we say? Um, if you know who Robert Wise is, he's directed some great classic movies. Um, of course, everybody's favorite Star Trek movie, The Motion Picture. Yeah. But he also did direct, um, I believe it was the original War of the Worlds. So yeah, there we go. Alrighty, <clears throat> then finally, uh, what can we say? This movie, yeah, sure, it bombs, but still has one of the best rock and soundtracks of all time, especially when you have one of the best lead singers in a metal band actually participate in the soundtrack, and let alone, you know, have his own voice in the, in the movie, and have one of the best metal concert scenes ever. Here we have... Queen of the Damned. Yeah. Of course, we have, you know, uh, music by Jonathan Davis from Korn. Great songs. Uh, I really wish that his versions were on the official soundtrack when it was released, but, you know, I think he has its own release somewhere. But, uh, you know, what can we say? Uh, you know, pretty good movie for what it is, but still, I just love the, the concert sequence in this movie. Alrighty, well that's it for me to you for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and that notification button. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.